In today's episode, we're gonna look at how I turned this into this. Using mocha tracking, 3D cameras, and even stealing from Michael B. Jordan. What does that mean? You'll have to stick around to find out. This is what I like to call the ultimate fix it and post challenge. So for today's challenge of what we'll be fixing in post was actually given to me by my wife, who's also a hard woman to impress. So we'll see what she thinks about the results at the end. Okay, so number one, as you know, I'm not a fan of the color yellow. So can we change the hoodie's color? Maybe something like a Spotify green? Okay, so the first task is to simply make the hoodie green. To start, I'm going to rotoscope the hoodie throughout the entire shot using the roto brush tool, making sure to be as detailed as possible with my selection. And once that plays all the way through, just hit freeze to lock it in. Once the rotor is frozen, I'll make adjustments to the feather and contrast to soften out the edges. Now, I'll duplicate the footage layer and delete the roto effect on the bottom layer. I'm also gonna go ahead and rename these layers to hoodie roto and main footage. Now, on the top layer, I'll apply the Lumetri's color effect and in the curves drop down menu, I can go to hue versus hue. Here, I can grab the eyedropper and select the hoodie, creating these points that I can now grab and simply adjust the hoodie's color. And just like that, we are done with task one, moving on to two. She writes, is there any way we can make him a little bit more beat up. To do that, I'm gonna wanna add blood to his hoodie, his face, and I'm even gonna try to make his left eye a little bit swollen. I wanna turn the green hoodie layer off and hide it for now to save RAM and just keep it out of the way. I'm gonna apply Mocha AE to the main footage layer and then jump into Mocha, track out the guy's chest and face. So for the chest, I'll just draw out this square and track through. For the face, I can draw here, but also using the add x spine tool, I can add another shape to his forehead that will also be a part of the face tracking data. So I'll go ahead and track that through as well. And once that is done, I can give the track's final look with the planar grid. And I'd say it looks pretty good. It's time to get back in After Effects. So back in After Effects, I'm gonna go ahead and create two nulls, one being for the chest track, and the other being for the face track. And then I'll go ahead and apply the tracking data from Mocha to the corresponding nulls. So with that done, I can go ahead and move on to the fun part, which is adding all the blood. For the blood, I'm just gonna grab some free PNGs off a completely safe website that sells some hot items too. Now to get rid of the white here, I can just set the blending mode to multiply, which reveals the PNGs a little secret. Clearly cleanpng.com wasn't as clean as I thought, but the fix is very simple. Just apply the extract uh, effect to the layer and then bring down the white. I'm also gonna go ahead and add a mesh warp to distort the blood with the hoodie's curves and then parent the layer to the feed track. Now for these next few steps that you're watching, I find it irrelevant to even explain because near the end of this edit, I'll completely change my mind on these decisions. That being said, if you find yourself needing blood assets for your next project, don't waste your time like me using free PNGs, but be sure to grab yourself the AE Juices Blood VFX Pack that gives you 125 unique blood elements from mist, splats, to even gashes and bleeding through materials, all in beautiful 4K resolution. This pack will give you the professional look you need while saving you time. So be sure to use the link in the description below. It helps out the channel and is greatly appreciated. And this was the channel's first ever official advertisement. So short celebration and back to it. So for the face, I'm gonna go ahead and use the same blood image and mask out the areas around here where his cheek is, feather it out slightly, and then be sure to parent it to the face track. So I'll also add in some noise and Gaussian blur, and this will just help the blood image fit better into the video. So the last thing that I'm going to do to make our guy look more beat up is give him a swollen eye, which I'll do just by stealing one from Michael B. Jordan. Remember that I mentioned that earlier? I said the wait, well now we're here. So I'll take this eye, mask it out, and use Lumetri color to color correct it. I'll also add some Gaussian blur and noise, just like I did with the blood image. And the last detail I wanna add is a shadow on the right side here, which I can do by drawing out a black shape around the area and track mat it to the swollen eye. I'll need to turn the swollen eye layer back on then soften up the shape with Gaussian blur, make the adjustments to the opacity until it looks right, and then parent the swollen eye and shadow to the face track. And lastly, I'll add some more blood to the other side of the face. And now I'd say he looks far more beaten up than the original. I would love to brag about how my wife thought this was gonna be hard and it's actually going pretty smoothly, but I'm also impressed with what we're getting out of this from her notes. I really think she has a good eye for this stuff. Anyway, her third note says, I'd like the actor to have more character. Can you give him a bandana or something? Yeah. Now she did say it could be a bandana or something. So it could be a bandana or it could be
And so we'll just stick with bandana, which is perfect though, because I happen to find the perfect image to use. I'm going to bring this into After Effects, mask out the bandana and position it in the correct spot generally. Here, I'll also use the Mesh Warp tool again to perfect its placement and then color correct it. Next, I'll add some noise and then parent it to the face track. So you can see the issue I'm having right now with the shot is that it's slightly separating from his head to the left, but I can fix that just by keyframing the mesh warp. Now I'll duplicate the layers two times and make them black fill layers to use as shadows that I'll soften out with Gaussian Blur. I'll drop the first layer's opacity some and blur it out a bit. And for the second layer, drop the opacity even more along with more blur and then mask out the edges of the shadow. Okay, so I'm gonna add this blood image to the bandana with the blending mode set to multiply and apply some noise and blur just like before. But I'll also want to have this blood effect grow as the shot plays as it seeps through the cloth. So to do that, I'll just add a simple choker to it and keyframe the choke mat to start at a high number and move down to zero. Finally, I'll duplicate the main footage layer, mask out the left ear and bring it to the front because as we know naturally, if I'm wearing something on my head, my ear is in front. And I'd say that looks good. Now, before I move on to the fourth and final note, I'm gonna go ahead and update the blood effect on the hoodie so it matches the similar animation that we made for the bandana. I just really like how we have that growing effect. I wanna apply that actually to the shirt too. So I'll just blur out the specs of the blood here and then add the growing blood layer that I just made for the bandana with the opacity brought down a bit. And that looks pretty good. Did you know that you can have a personal relationship with the almighty God right now? The God that created the universe, the God that created you, the very DNA in my hands right here and every single cell. John 3, 16 said that for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life. Jesus came and he died for people like you, for people like me, for sinners. He didn't die for the righteous, he died for sinners. We're all sinners, but he died for us and he said that if we are faithful to confess our sins, he is faithful to forgive us and cleanse us of all our unrighteousness. Don't waste another minute apart from Christ. Repent, give your life to him. If you have any questions regarding this, there's links to resources below that really help with these kind of things. And yeah, let's get back to the video. So the final note that I have been given reads this. I'd love to have some foreground elements in the shot to spice it up and spice it up we will. So what I'm thinking and what makes sense is if I just add some wires hanging from the ceiling. This looks like a dingy place, wires would be hanging, right? Maybe, you know, if the production design just couldn't afford it, well, the VFX team can. So first I'm going to 3D track the shot, being sure to delete all the tracking points on our actor and then create a camera. Now I'll head over to Google and snag some wires and then drop them into After Effects. I'll mask out one of the wires and remove the white with the blending mode set to multiply. I wanna make this layer 3D, turn on the motion blur and then apply a fast box blur so that it appears out of focus. I'll also go ahead and keyframe this blur so the wires become blurrier as they pass the camera. Now I'll just go ahead and do this several more times with different wire elements, adjusting their position in 3D space until I got something I like, add some sparks for fun and finish it off with a color grade and that leaves us with this. It's good. Yes. <laughs> Remember, if you have any shots that you want me to edit for the ultimate fix the most challenge with whatever notes you give me, then we may feature it in the series. So go ahead and send them my way. And God bless. Remember, Jesus loves you. I know I'm saying that in a humorous tone, but that's true. He does. <laughs> <laughs>